Hello, it's Eno, and welcome back to another episode of Warframe Tips and Tricks. I'm your host, Reem Magno, a.k.a. Father McFeely. And today we're going to be talking all about conservation missions on Fortuna. This includes the hunt of critters that have just been released. The Sawgall, the Horask, and the... Uh, goodness, the Stover. Had to think on that one for a second. And I will actually go over details and tips for each individual creature as we go along. So, first and foremost, I do recommend, and this guide is exclusively for use of Ivara, so if you don't have her, refer to one of my previous videos on how to effectively farm for her, which will require the use of either Loki or Limbo. Okay, so real quick, if you do have Ivara, we'll go ahead and continue here. Okay, so if you go into your gear, you will need the Trank Rifle, as well as the calling cards for any critters that are within your range. This is actually going to be a good guide for farming reputation effectively within Fortuna while still being moderately entertaining and not feeling like a grindy uh, fest. Uh, grind fest, yeah. <laughs> okay, so with the use of Ivara, we're going to go in and I will explain the build for this. This does not require the use of power so much as just using her abilities to uh, ensure you successfully capture all of your prey. So first and foremost, I do recommend Speed Holster, giving you 120% holster speed. This allows you to switch between weapons and gear significantly faster. You can actually flip this around. Um, I'm using a rank 2 streamline with a 15% ability efficiency and fleeting expertise for plus 60 efficiency and minus 60 duration. You can actually go with the lower rank on the fleeting expertise and the higher rank on the uh, streamline. That way you don't affect your duration so much, but for this purpose it works really well. Of course, a little bit of vitality. As you can see, I do have one form on here. I believe I added an extra Vazarine. I believe she came with Vazarine and a Naramon. Okay, so vitality, that gives me 50, if, I'm sorry, 550 health, and I have a basic 300 shield. So you will need to be careful about avoiding enemies, uh, but really this is just for the focus of conservation. Let's see, max rank on narrow minded giving me 99 duration, minus 66 range, and you will compensate for that with overextended giving you an additional 30% to range, and minus 62 strength. You'll also have constitution with plus 28 duration and faster knockdown recovery, continuity for an additional 30% duration, and primed flow or flow, either one. This build actually is really efficient and doesn't require the use of much energy, so you can actually do without flow altogether. I just run it because I like having that excess. Now if we review over her abilities, we're going to be using Quiver and Prowl for this. Quiver has four different arrows to select from. You cycle through by tapping your primary key, which would be by default one on the keyboard. So you have Cloak, Dash Wire, Noise, and Sleep Arrow. I also recommend the use of Prowl, as this allows you to go invisible and sneak up on your prey. Uh, it has a cost of 6 energy and 0.25 per second, so you can actually activate the ability and Cloak for all of 16 seconds at the cost of a total of 10 energy. Okay, so what we'll be focusing on is the use of these two abilities. I actually have a little uh, trick for this one later, and I will explain later. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and go on to the Volus. Now we're back out on the Volus. So first off, if you have an operator with the Xeneric school, and you do the Void Dash, you can actually charge up your energy with the energy field produced by it. Uh, I actually forget the name of the ability at the moment. If you know it, good on you. <laughs> okay, so uh, as I was explaining the use of the arrows, if you tap one, you can cycle through them. If you hold one, you can fire them. Uh, for instance, if I fire that, I am within a cloaking field. Now this is actually really good because unlike Prowl, if you're in Prowl and you fire your gun, you'll see I pop out a cloak. Take that off, step in there. Not only are my shots muffled, I do not come out of my cloak. 
Okay, we'll also be utilizing dash wire at certain points, noise arrow in case we encounter enemies, and sleep arrows to put enemies down so they don't interfere with our hunt. All right, so if you pull out your Trank Rifle and hold M, you will pull up an interactive map. As you can see, you move it around, you can drop waypoints. So I'm going to mark a point and we will travel on over there. Here we are at our first point. This one is actually a Stover trail. Stovers are always found within caves. Uh, I say always as all the ones I've ever encountered were inside caves. Now, if you look at this, you can hear flies swarming around it, and you see it's obviously a pile of poo. <laughs> if you walk up to it and interact with it, you've got your points here. Now, stovers are blind. They act like bats. They will actually communicate by sound. So you follow your trail, as you can see my thing scanned the point here. And we'll go ahead and switch over to the stover lore. Now, real quick uh, about this, you cannot use Warframe abilities as long as you've got your, your conservation equipment out, so it will be important to remember to cycle between them. Okay, so first we'll go ahead and call the stover here. All right, and if you have a decent headset, you're, you're, you'll be able to tell which direction they're going to be coming from with the left uh, left right audio differential. And now you just make a second call again. Then we're going to go ahead and cloak. And if you crouch down, you can move around without risking them hearing you so much. Okay, so another important thing about these guys is they take multiple trank shots to go down. So what we'll do is tap one and cycle to your sleep barrel, aim at him, down he goes. And we have a perfect capture. This one is a Sentinel Stover, so it's basic. It's not worth as much. Uh, I'm currently capped out on reputation, so you can't see how much it's actually worth. Sorry on that, I'll go over that later. All right, so now you can drop your cloak, and that wraps up this hunt. We'll find another point as soon as we get out of this cave. I'm going to try and include each one of the critters on this video, so I will mark this point. So we've just gotten to a cave uh, that we marked a moment ago, and as you can see, I'm right at the point here, but it is nowhere to be found here. This is actually important to remember. Some critter tracks you can actually find from within the cave, so if you walk into the cave where you see the HUD is actually identifying the cave itself, hold the map and you will see the point in the cave that you can find the call. Or, I'm sorry, the start. And here is going to be another stover. Uh, you can actually find stovers, bolarola, vermink, and on occasion, possibly saga tracks coming through here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and complete this hunt as this is already here. And there's that point. Pull out your call. And let's see if we can luck up on a nice one. Okay, so he's going to be coming from back that way. Cloak and crouch down. He's right up here. And again, we're not really using anything but the sleep arrow. This way we don't have to worry about risking him escaping. Eh, that was another Sentinel Stover, another common, but easy, easy hunt. Now we go back out, pull our Trank Rifle back out. Here we are at our next point, and as you can see, it does stand out quite well amongst the snow. Sometimes it's actually inside the grass, so you do have to look around for it for a bit. If you have the Trank Rifle out, you can actually see when you are right on top of it in your hood. So this is going to be a Bolarola, so we'll go ahead and switch to the Bolarola lore. Interact with that and follow the trail right to its point. OK, 
Okay, there are enemies nearby. Alright, stop here so it's actually leading me away from the enemies. Oh, did I lose the tracks? Let's see. You gotta be careful, sometimes the tracks will be hard to see on the snow or even the colorful embankments. Now the water actually reflects the footprints quite well. Uh, except for where they pick up on the... Okay, did I climb the cliff? That's just weird. <laughs> Anyway, so we should be right over here. Uh, this one's going to be in a funny place. Yeah, right here. And I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Is it stone? Is it, I don't know, gel or what? The texture's really trippy, and it's funny to see these things here. All right, so we'll switch it. Okay, that was a bad move. Okay, switch to the sound call. It's going to be coming from that way. Make the call again. Switch out, cloak. And remember, do not make any sudden movements while doing this. There we are. Alright, so a Bolarola is armored on the top and bottom. We'll get a close look at it. Let's crouch down and move on right next to him. As you can see, he's armor plated. His weakness is actually on his underside. We have an easy fix for that. You only have one shot with the Trank Rifle to get him. Or you could just do Night Night. That's a Black Banded Bolarola. I believe that's the uncommon one. And as you can see with this, you get a good look at him. He looks like a cross between a Komodo Dragon, an Armadillo, and a Porcupine with all the quills on the... Well quill-like armor period, uh, plates on his back. I love these things. They're cool. Alright, so that's how you deal with the Bolarola. And switch back to your Trank Rifle so we get another look at a point. Here we are in our next one. This one is a Horask. It's one of the new critters ex uh, exclusive to Fortuna. So we're going to go ahead and switch to our Horask lore. Interact with the point, and you will see the footprints. Now, this one is actually entertaining, as it does not make sense. This creature is a burrower. It's subterranean. It does not walk on the surface, so how's it leaving footprints? In addition to that, along its path, you will find toxic scat. Do not step on these. They're exploding poop. But as it's subterranean, and you find these every few feet along the trail, I'm trying to figure out, does it dig five feet? come up, take a crap, drop back down, dig five feet, do the same again, because this just makes this creature a real joke. All right, so uh, following their path is really easy because there's poop all along the path. So we'll go ahead and switch to our call. Well, I've already got my call out, so we'll go ahead and make it. going to be coming from that way. Right, call, cloak, crouch, and if you have trouble finding where it's coming from, you can pull the trank rifle out and keep tabs on it. Ah, there it is. Now as you can see, you can watch it digging underground. It comes up every few feet to catch air, but because it has to come up for air. If you just fire a trank arrow, it comes right up to the surface. As you can see, perfect capture. Although this one is a common Horask. Alright, easy peasy there. Just watch out for the poop, makes it easier to follow the path, but it will damage your health directly, so try not to step in it. Alright, now real quick, in this area you'll see near the reflector control tower if you drop the waypoint over here, it will actually point you to the top right here. It's actually in the path down there. So you're going to wind up encountering enemies, but no problem. We're just going to cloak and quietly make our way in there. Again, no sudden movements, and it's going to be right here. This one is a Sawgaw. 
and we'll just follow it over this way. Solgals are always found in the tops of Gorgarigus mushrooms when you hunt them, so they will be a little bit out of reach and maybe a challenge to get to. Not so much with Ivara, though. Right, so we're going to make our way away from the enemy base. All right, and we're near the mushrooms, so it will be right around here. Let's see where the point, oh, where the footprints go. Ah, okay, that's just, I didn't expect it to turn around the cliff like that. Should almost be there. Okay, we've got company that we don't want. Alright, so we go down here to the Sawgall point. Before we call the Sawgall, we're going to drop a dash wire to the top of this mushroom here. As I suspect, it's actually going to go for the higher point. We're also going to run over here and set the zip line to the top of this one. Okay, be careful about ledges like this because you can't just jump straight up, as you see. You want to jump off to the side like that in order to get up. And then we are going to fire a zip line here, here, and here. We also see we have some enemies around here. Make sure to clear the way, that way we have no interruptions. Just one moment. Pardon the noise. All right, now we're going to go down here. Switch to your call. Okay, it's going to be coming from that direction. track of where our zip line was down there so okay one fun thing about Ivara is her ability to move slide and so on on her things while cloaked okay now we're going to pull out our trank rifle so we can get an idea of where this bugger is there he is over there nice right, so he's a little bit out of reach not to worry, if we switch, throw a dash wire over there. Let's keep an eye on where he's going. Okay. He only roosts for a brief moment. There he is. Uh, matter of fact, he's right here. Do not use the sleep arrow on him. Instead, just trank him. There's currently a glitch. If you use the sleep arrow, he will fall through the plant and get stuck. Alright, that was a good capture. It would have actually been a perfect capture had I thrown down a cloak arrow at my feet and then shot him. But since I used the trank rifle and a temporarily uncloaked right next to him, it dropped the rank. No big deal there. But like I said, absolutely do not shoot him with the um, sleep arrow because the it has an AOE effect and it, it seems to affect the texture around it. It has a range of 7.7 .7 meters, which is around from here to my point. So everything around it is altered. 
uh, we don't want to deal with that. So that's how you effectively capture Sawgulls. All right, we're at our next point, and it appears to be a Kubrodon. So we're going to select our Kubrodon lure. Oop, help if I actually do select it. Interact with the point and just follow it up. Now the Kubrodon, it, pretty much everything we're hunting, we can take down with the sleep arrows to get better points and not have to worry about them fleeing. Uh, I will tell you there is a little bit of a trick to hunting them. If you want better scores, no sudden movements, crouch, walk, and do not become uncloaked at any point. Uh, that will pretty much guarantee you get a perfect every single time. Now where we're at right now, enemies do come through fairly often, so do be careful. Alright, his noise came from up there. Alright, now we're just going to crouch and make our way up. Make sure to switch to your sleep arrow. Okay, there he is. Oh, and he's the rare one. The Kubridon Incarnadine. That was a perfect capture, and I believe he's worth around four to 6,000 points alone. And now your points per day is limited to your mastery rank times 1,000 plus 1,000. So if your mastery rank is like 918, you will have a max of 19,000 per day. This one is actually one of my favorites and among the easiest to do for this method, and it actually gets you points quite quickly. The Pauber. A rodent that resembles a field mouse crossed with a zerg. Interact with it and we'll follow it to its point. I don't know if anybody if everybody knows what a Zerg is. It's a reference to StarCraft. Okay, sounds like I'm going to have some company in a second. By the sounds of it, those mites. Yeah, I'm hearing them. Here we are. come from back that way and yes I do have company that should be enough okay so real quick so we can keep track of them you want them to be in close proximity as I said the sleep ability has a range from here to here so you want them close together stovers always travel in packs of three so you get three captures from these critters they range in value from uh, 400 I think to 800 points per right, so we'll move the waypoint there and we'll call And if you pull your trank rifle back out, you can see where they're coming from exactly. Oh, those would be enemies. There they are. Let me go ahead and mark them so we can keep track of them easily. And put the gun away. Crouch down and move off to the side. We're going to wait till all three of them are close together. And they've actually made it to the nest quite fast. And down we go. Once they drop, click, click, click. Perfect, perfect, good. I think because the last one was on the outskirts of the shot, but the subterranean pobbers are the uncommon ones and they're worth a bit. I think overall what I got there was around 1600 to 2000 points just for those three in that short amount of time. We're actually at the last of the critters for this conservation, the vermink. Interact with it and you can keep moving. Now the vermink is sensitive to smell. So as you can see the particles, I'm actually 
uh, walking with the flow of the wind here. When you actually get to the point you got to call it, it is important to keep in track, uh, keep mind of which direction the wind is going from and where he is coming from when he calls back. Let's see here. There's the footprints. Uh, okay, he's scaling all over the place here. Okay, and now we can go ahead and call this guy. All right, he is coming from that direction. The wind is coming from that direction, so we can wait down there for him. Oops, wrong button. And there he is right up there. We can actually kind of sneak around him. Ah, and it's a dusky-headed Vermink. And down you go. Alright, that is every critter that you can hunt. Okay, so we'll go ahead and deactivate that, and we'll start heading back to town. So if you open up your map, you can highlight Fortuna there, and we'll go on back. I love doing that. <laughs> And when you launch out of your arc wing, you actually get a double jump out of it. That closes out how to hunt for all critters for the conservation missions. Now, during the progress uh, process of shooting this video, I did discover something I did not know before this point. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video so I can make it easier. If there are certain things you want to farm for points, uh, as you've seen when I have the Trank Rifle out, and you hold up the map, you see all of these points. I actually assumed that these points were random encounters. However, if you pull out a specific calling card, say Pauvers, and you see I've got the equipment out right here, hold your map button, and you will see one, two, three, or more points. Those are locations where you can encounter the Pauver. We'll switch over to Sawgalls. And look, you can find them here, here, and here. Here, I actually avoid this location because it's on, it's on the edge of the map, and there are freezing winds that will slow down your progress quite a bit. Okay, so then we'll switch one more time. Say we want to try and find that, what was it, fire-veined stover. We want to try and capture the rare stover. So we can find them at this cave this one, or even this one. And that is actually really quite useful. Again, I actually assume this all to be random. So if you have the Trank Rifle out, everything is up on the screen. If you pull out the card, only that is on the screen. So that's really good to know if you want to do things like farming for the emblems. And the information I was talking about on the floofs, if you go to the business, you can go to trade tags. And you can find little decorations to put in your sh uh, ship. You have to count, uh, capture certain amounts of certain ones in order to get it. Uh, they also have emblems that you can use as well. As you can see, I only need one fire-veined stover. And over here, I need one thorny bolarola. Uh, so I've failed to capture two creatures altogether. 
not really bad. Um, really, that's just an achievement thing for you if you capture everything. Um, I don't know if they actually have an achievement for conserving all types of creatures, uh, creatures, but it's just something you can do to place around your ship. Uh, that pretty much wraps up this guide. I definitely appreciate everybody for watching. Again, if you don't have Ivara and you want to know how to farm for her, refer to my previous video, uh, Warframe Tips and Tricks, uh, Lim uh, Limbo and Ivara. It will tell you how to use Limbo or even Loki how to effectively farm for Ivara components. She is only obtainable from spy missions. I really appreciate everybody watching. Like, comment, subscribe to future videos, and I look forward to seeing you next time.